G'day guys, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. As you know, at the Beacon Fight for Life, what we want to do is reduce the number of people taking their own life by suicide. So today what I've got is uh, Dr. Louise Mansell's joined me and she's, uh, she's got a fascinating story about the brain, but she's also uh, delivers a, a course called the 4Ds, which we're not going to go into yet. Um, welcome, Dr. Hello, Louise. thank you for having me here. Um, thank, you for, thank you for joining us. So... Who, who are you and, and what's, your, what's been a bit, bit, bit about your background? Yeah, so I'm originally from Manchester in the UK. We uh, moved here two years ago with a okay. family. And yeah, I qualified over there in a uh, doctorate in clinical psychology. And in 2010, so I've been practicing for about 15 years with a range of people, families, schools, organisations, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, I didn't do, I think, honestly, I didn't do very well in school. And then when I got to like college and university, <laughs> it really didn't. Yeah, me <laughs> we'll go into that. <laughs> um, but at college and university, you get this kind of freedom to kind of learn in your own way and pick subjects that you can actually get into. Mm -hmm. And I found like just doing things slightly in my own way and also psychology for me just felt instinctive. So as soon as I read about what it was, mm. that is what I was doing. I was 18 mm. and I, that is what I was doing. And what? seven, nine years later, I was qualified in it. Nice, so and, uh, I think you started with trauma and children, is that right? Yeah, so really started specialising with trauma and children and what you then realise, it's a bit like anything and a bit like workplace wellbeing, it has to be the whole organisation, mm -hmm. which kind of led, led one thing to the other. So mm -hmm. even 4D, but my career as a whole kind of grew a little bit mm -hmm. organically mm -hmm. from what was coming up. Okay. Um, yeah. So you refer to the four Ds, but again, we're going to leave that for a little bit. Why? When we, before we go into that, why should people believe that this concept actually will work, or you know, is it is it, is it science based? Yeah, I mean, ideally, anything that psychology should be doing should have an empirical background. We're not just saying, "Oh, this works for Marjorie down the road. Mm. Try that." And I will say that to anyone I meet, like if this. If whatever technique, strategy, session we're doing isn't working, please do tell me because this is this is their time. Yeah. Um, and if it's not working out for them, we have to think about why. Because it should work. The same as drinking water mm. should hydrate us. If it's science, mm. that there's not there's not that big an argument for why it's not working. You just sometimes have to adjust things so they work. Mm. And I think what I what I felt passionate about from the start is because psychology and understanding the brain felt so instinctive to me and theories that I really were drawn to. Mm. I just wanted to make psychology make sense to everybody else. Okay. So that's what led me to work with children because you got this opportunity to start young yep. and teach them then. Um, and that led to like really innovative YouTube shows, uh, children's books, and then training for organizations and schools mm -hmm. that meant that you were just increasing this knowledge of, of the brain and the science yeah. of mental health. Yeah. So with the four Ds, who who is it designed to help? That in terms of how it started? Well you can we can go through how it started, but I, I guess let's start there, how it started, but you've I, I know you've just touched on a little bit of what it's for what it's for, but who for the people listening out there, you know, who would be who would, who would this information be more relevant? For the four Ds. Yeah, for the four Ds, I would, I'd say everybody. Good. Yeah, everybody. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's very universal, and I suppose a bit like how, how I describe learning is, you have to find the right thing for you, mm -hmm. and four D combines so many different aspects that it's, it's highly unlikely there's not going to be something useful for everybody in there. Yep. And we've not had any feedback that hasn't been useful. So you've touched on this too. So one size doesn't fit all it's a triangle it's a, it's got it's got it's fit, filled up with four d's and so there's at least it gives you a, a foundation to work with yeah a foundation to work with and an understanding of why at sometimes some strategies that you're doing might not be enough for you they might not be helping so i think it's really important especially doing what you do is that people have to have hope that there's something that can work and if they've tried lots of therapies and it's not worked, that can be really disheartening. And 4D kind of brings together this rubric of all these different 
things that you could do and why you would do them, why you would do something. As you say, it's a, it's a triangle pyramid, why you might need to do something that's different than you've, things you've been suggested before, giving someone that understanding of long-term and short-term. So I asked you a question, I asked you a question before we started, you know, or not asked you a question, I made a statement that, you know, I like to help people help people. And I thought we looking at the four Ds that it was more about for individuals for themselves to help themselves but you've explained to me it's slightly different and it could help both people yeah both both people that need to help people and people that need to help themselves yeah so i suppose when we well, we'll get into it but it's very much for or organizations that were interestingly when we did the research on it we were we were pleasantly surprised to say the least that if there was 25 people on a workshop having 4 Ds delivered to them mm -hmm. or 200 it made no difference to outcome it was as effective okay so this That's opened good. up this kind of oh my goodness we can deliver a 90 minute intervention that benefits 200 people mm. at at once like we never imagined it would do that mm. um we didn't considered it would do that it was it was a model developed on the spur, like on the on the cuff in COVID, having been phoned up and said, "Yeah, thank you." Our, COVID, COVID our again. staff are yeah. not coping. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a school phoned me and said, "Louise, our staff are not coping. I've got fifty staff and ninety minutes on a Wednesday. What can you do?" And I was like, "What can I do?" Let's think I've on got, your feet. I've got to do something. This <laughs> is COVID, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, they weren't okay and it evolved from there really because then obviously i knew as a clinician who practiced all the things that over the years people had told me help mm -hmm. and i could understand the science of why that would help okay but to bring that together required a, i suppose a, a theoretical model mm -hmm. which is where warren and the university of manchester came in to kind of bring that together yep. and say these strategies that you've described help you quite easily fit here mm -hmm. these ones fit here these are long term these are short term and along came the model and it kind of snowballed after that really and getting bigger and bigger mm -hmm. um until we, we once it was published it was delivered to over a thousand people within months wow yeah that's well done so yeah so what are the four d's and so, do you, how do you how do you explain them you know in a in a efficient manner so that yeah. the, the audience can Um, yeah, so the four Ds, I suppose, is that kind of, it's very efficient, and that was the idea. It had to be efficient, because we've got the practicalities of a workforce. Yeah. Um, and if you've got your workforce on well-being, you're paying them. Yes. So, very, very practically, if we, as psychologists, want to help people, we've got to do it quickly. <laughs> okay. Not if they can come to us for one-to-one -one sessions, it's different. Yeah. They're already investing in it themselves. Yeah. But that's not always an option for mass services, mass organisations or, or colleges, schools who haven't got that amount of time. Um, and it, fit, it just really fits into that kind of making in, instinctive sense to me to make it this simplistic. I think it was that Einstein said, if you, can't un if you can't explain things simply enough, you don't understand them well enough. Something along those yeah, lines. Well, if you can't put it on a napkin, it's too complicated. <laughs> yeah, that kind of idea. This has to be really understandable because if this goes as wide as we'd love it to go especially now being in australia when it goes <laughs> when, when it goes um when it goes then um yeah it needs to be really understandable for the masses yeah. um so it starts off with kind of a really really engaging what do you do to distract yourself and that is as, as simple as that it might be that people go for a walk they might listen to music so they, the first thing is distract first day is distract i'll be very systematic with it the first and i'll do this all the time <laughs> always doing it. i say i should just wear it on a t-shirt the first day is distract and it's just getting people to remind themselves of what they do to distract themselves from distress usually that isn't very difficult because yeah. people are very good at thinking about what to distract how to distract themselves from stress yeah. we're sometimes encouraged to do that a little bit too much mm -hmm. Um, so a quick example of what that might look like? So that, that might be going for a walk in nature, mm -hmm. um, that might be getting on with DIY, <laughs> going to Bunnings, <laughs> um, that might be anything that takes your mind off it. And at no point are any of these, uh, as a model, are we criticising any of these strategies. Mm -hmm. 
because that's very functional. If you need to get on with your day at work, you might need to just distract yourself mm -hmm. to get on with your day. So a day at work is a distraction? Yeah. Okay. Might, yeah. It's for me. <laughs> it's not easier than being at home with the children. <laughs> um, so the second D? So then you're kind of moving up to think about um, dilute. So the second D is dilute. And that's very much about getting control of your own bodily symptoms and mm -hmm. sensations that people actually find very worrying at times. Mm -hmm. um, so that might be fidgeting with something. I warned you, I might rock on this chair to dilute my own distress. Okay. About this interview. Or, or drink a cup of tea. <laughs> or drink a cup of tea. So <coughs> anything that kind of, you can think of your own things. Again, it's always led by the person. They might have their own things already. Some people will really enjoy mindfulness, mm -hmm. progressive muscle relaxation, where you tense and relax to get an understanding and control of your bodily sensations. Um, so we'll introduce within the workshop people mm -hmm. to ways of reducing distress in their body, mm -hmm. ways of getting control of their bodily sensations. And we do introduce them to a range of them quite quickly yep. so that they can then go out and try them because they might have tried other ones. Um, and it's, it's what we, as we go through, we do explain at each level the kind of science of it. And we were like thinking, oh, you know, this is being delivered as a well-being model for staff. How much of the science do they need to know? Um, I've had really hard to recommend a treatment without telling them the science behind it because I think you get by in then. Yeah. Or I, would, I wouldn't buy something new if I didn't know why it's going to work. So we've, tr we've tried within the 90 minutes to combine yeah, talking about why this should work, why this will work, mm -hmm. um, and introducing them to a range of those most effective, efficient ways of reducing distress, mm -hmm. reducing symptoms in your body. A quick example of that? Um, so mindfulness is one of those. Mm -hmm. um, s slow breathing, regulating mm -hmm. your own heart rate, that kind of box breathing, they call it here, square mm -hmm. breathing. Um, so any kind, anything that gives you a sense that you're going to get control of those symptoms okay. so that you can, you can have a moment, you can feel your kind of sense of threat building up, your distress building up, mm -hmm. and you can take five minutes to just bring it back down, which you might have to do throughout the day. You might have to do when you're having a really hard time outside of work mm -hmm. to get through the day. Yeah. So it's introducing people to those things so that they can pick which ones for them. Okay. But also kind of making people aware that they are short-term strategies. Mm -hmm. They're not the strategy for well-being. Yeah. And, and that's been really important within the model because the bottom two are more short-term mm -hmm. fixes, if you like. Mm -hmm. But if so it's something long-term, prolongingly distressing you, if your sleep's affected, your concentration, your irritability, mm -hmm. you're probably going to need to go up yeah. further. Okay. So where does develop fit in? So de develop's one of my one of my favourite bits yeah. of this because people are so amazing and so resourceful already, but we can forget at our hardest times we can forget how far we've come, um, and that's a real opportunity to hand the, the the stage over to them and think about when was the last time you coped, who helped you cope, what helped you cope, mm. and really bring those to mind. What's beautiful about that is it's informed by compassion focused therapy. And that's the idea that just by bringing something to mind, it will soothe our nervous system by Paul Gilbert. Wonderful. So, develop me, is that where you, where you can explore? Maybe you've got brain fog and you've been struggling to take action on something, and then you can develop the strength by thinking that, well, wait a minute, I did this previously. Is yeah. That, is that an example? That's one element of it. And that came about, as I said, I'm predominantly a clinician. And there were certain elements in stories, and I love stories, I love people's stories. People are just fascinating. We're, the brain's fascinating. Yep. Um, and a parent had said to me, we were doing a workshop, and she was walking up the stairs in the morning to get mm. to the workshop because she didn't like lifts. And we weren't. Good for exercise. And good for exercise. <laughs> um, and she turned and said to me, I've overcome breast cancer, and I won't go in your lift. What am I doing? And I was like, well, it wasn't the work, this wasn't the workshop, it was a completely different workshop. Yeah. It was for child anxiety, so um, for, her, for her children. So she said, I'm going in the lift from next week. Nice. And it was just that kind of, yeah, and the science came in from thinking, what is that? 
what is it that if we remind ourselves of what we've achieved, what we've overcome, it'll give us strength to do the next bit. Yep. Um, so there's that and there's also within that, there's lots of things thrown in there, um, a concept called worry time. Mm -hmm. So general anxiety disorder is typically um, renowned for people feeling like they can't control their own worries. Mm -hmm. So I remember when I was uh, in my first year training, the professor came in, um, who we all knew very well, was like, oh! and he said when he's treating someone with uh, general anxiety disorder, um, he'll tell them why not, and they'll say, I can't stop worrying. And he'll say, well, why don't you just stop? And we were like, sit down. Um, and he said, because if they say I can't, it means they don't think they can control their own worries. Mm -hmm. um, and once you know that they don't think they can control their own worries, part of the intervention is to help them start to get control of their worries. Mm -hmm. So giving their worry a time. So within 4D, we introduce people to the concept that you give yourself a time to think about your worries, to think about what's on your mind. So it could be a minute of five minutes a day, 10 minutes yep, a day, yep. shorter the better, is it? Not, not particularly. Um, I think with the, with the model, what we would say after worry time, you might want to go down and do a dilute and you might want to then distract yourself. So you're always kind of going, once you've gone up, you always come down. Um, because it's the concept is that my worries aren't controlling me. They're not, if they're popping into my head mm -hmm. um, all the time throughout the day, they, they need some attention. Our brain's trying to process something. Mm -hmm. This is what affects our sleep, mm -hmm. is our brain's actually trying to sort things out. To deal with something. Yeah. So you could still shelve it if it keeps popping in things. Yes. Oh, I'm going to deal with that yeah. for that half an hour or hour I've got to put aside to have mindfulness. Yeah, I'm going to sit in it. Yeah, I'm going to shelve it mm. until and tell, take like a time. Yeah, and have an end point so you know that you're going to deal with it, you're not just avoiding it. Yeah, you're not just avoiding it, you're not distracting yourself from it, you're not just doing deep breaths mm. all day long. It needs thinking about, it needs time. but I'm going to think about it at six o'clock tonight. I'm going to do my list at six o'clock tonight. Yeah. Whatever time the person chooses is a good time. And I've got one more here, distract. Distract. The more complicated distract uh, not distract that di discover you mean yeah the okay. tough one yeah is okay. that what you mean um the, di the discover is the more kind of talking therapy okay um what's fascinating as i said this did develop in covid in response to high levels of stress in workplaces mm -hmm. and we had to be online and um, the modeling did evolve with feet based on feedback from people and how we were finding it and one of the things that is just unreal about the model is you can have all these people on a screen ask questions as a psychologist mm -hmm. to them, like what's bothering you about that? Think of something that's bothering you. Mm -hmm. What's bothering you about that? What's so hard about that for you? All the sorts of questions that would kind of untangle it so it's cognitive. in your mind. So it's very cognitive, mm -hmm. but you're on mute. And you're seeing so 280 people I did this two months. I, oh, I, my heart was racing when I saw the numbers popping up. Um, <laughs> it's I, been a work. Yeah, I was like, oh my goodness. Too, like, but um, when it's not, and it's just this screen of people answering you, nobody can hear them. They're at home, in the comfort of their own home. Mm -hmm. That's what we encourage. Mm -hmm. um, so they're on mute, so they're talking, but they're, they, they're answering hear. my questions. I can't hear them. Yeah. And then you'll see them getting emotional, upset. Mm -hmm because it's being processed and realizing this is what this is about. Mm -hmm. So we do a short snippet of that and that gives them the, I suppose, the skills to know what they can ask themselves, self-talk, mm -hmm. but also how they can help someone else. So actually I just need to sit with them and ask them, what is it about that that's bothering you? Mm -hmm. um, and another part of Discover is getting them to write it. So it's kind of what we call free writing and the same question what's bothering you or what's important to you at the moment and just write anything that comes to mind and you'll see people don't want to stop sometimes and you're like you really are gonna have to stop but take it with you yeah. make this your strategy now yeah. um and different ones suit different people and that's that's fine that's the, that's the beauty of it you you'll find your your thing when we started we didn't know really we we did discover and it was only you know seeing people getting emotional on the screen or enjoying the kind of process of it and wanting to carry it on that we realized actually it's better 
to come back down the pyramid then mm -hmm. and end on a on a distract and on a funny memory because that mm -hmm. brings serotonin to our brains and it's compassionate um so that we're not leaving the session the 90 minutes on discover okay um yeah so to summarize the four d's if you can say what they are in order and who they're designed to help yep so there shall say to you no. all right um so there's distract again the kind of anything you're already doing to distract yourself from worries anything on your mind all helpful stuff then there's the, the dilute that's helping introduce people to ways to dilute distress within their system and gain control of their symptoms of distress. Once we're getting to um, develop, we're kind of developing that, that resilience, that resourcefulness in, in a person, reminding them of that and giving them additional strategies for how to do it um, so that they're ready for discover. Mm -hmm. What we don't want, and sometimes you hear that within um, health services, is that someone's disengaged from therapy. Sometimes they're not disengaged from therapy, they're not ready for it. Mm -hmm. And discover you have to be ready for. So this pyramid's very much about getting someone up to a point where they feel ready for just a dose of discover. It's not a big section of it, it's 15 minutes. Um, they can engage as much or as little as they can tolerate. That's, good. That's really important. The, the person has to be in control of how much they engage with mm -hmm. this. Um, and then we work our way back down to introduce a couple more strategies on the way back down. Yep. So you'd like to make this presentation, or this is designed to pre present to workplaces, to companies, small, large, medium? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So if, they, if people want to get hold of you, how do they do that? So oh. we... Oh, go on. I got... I'll, I'll yeah, say you've that. got it written down. So I don't I've got here, at the, letter, the number four, de-stress. So at four, de-stress, which is X, formerly known as Twitter. Most of just call it Twitter. Um, and we've also got, uh, I didn't write the other one down. What was the other one that you had? Um, I, I tend to post some sort of articles and the research papers on it are on my LinkedIn, which is Dr. LinkedIn. Louise Mansell. Yeah, Dr. Louise Mansell um, on LinkedIn. <clears throat> now, before we finish, thank you for sharing that. Nice. It's really exciting and I can't wait to learn it myself. Um, Brian the Brain. <laughs> yeah. you... hey, Brian. So part of um, a little, here he is, <laughs> he's making his debut in Western Australia, he's travelled right. far. So I like that, it's a, like even just reading the name Brian the Brain, it's like twist the brain a little bit. Yeah, so again it fits in that, that, that kind of drive I suppose that I had to make this really complicated science that I found just made so much sense. I thought like everybody needs to know this. Mm. So whether that was writing a book with my my son to mm. to um, demonstrate kind of all the kind of different chemicals and um, features of our brain that promote well-being and how we need that kind of balance. Yep. Um, yeah. If it gets children and parents talking about it, um, that's that's good enough. It's just really making that uh, creative and fun and engaging. You 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 I've just, you've just got to make psychology appeal Fun. and and yeah engaging. So where does where does some, where can someone get a copy of that? Someone can contact me for Brian or they can actually go to my workplace which is Mini Minds in East Fremantle. Awesome. He's, um, he's a there's a knitted version of Brian that someone kindly made for for me. Very clever. Um, the children normally ask if I've made the knitted character. <laughs> no, is the answer to that one. Um, knitting, but yeah, you can meet him there. Awesome. Well, Dr. Louise uh, Mansell, thank you for taking no the time trouble. to share your information with us today. I really appreciate that. Um, for those guys out there, thank you for listening. And uh, again, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. Take the time to smile today. Thank you.